Hello there, it's Justin from Hans Wargaming. So I recently upgraded my vent booth for my resin printer and I wanted to show you guys what I did. I've been using my laundry room as a vent area for quite a while. For my original setup, I just uh, split another vent line off of my laundry line so I wouldn't have to run another line out of my house because I didn't really want to put a, a hole in the wall and I didn't really want to leave a window open for prolonged periods. So it made sense to me to use the laundry line. So I added a Y to that line, and then I just ran that through my uh, Ventec fan, which is a 440 CFM fan. That's cubic feet per minute. That's the maximum amount of air that it can move. And I have a variable speed controller for this fan as well, so I can lower the speed of the fan if I want. I have a backdraft dampener on both sides of this line so that the uh, airflow doesn't go back into the dryer or out of the uh, fan when I'm not using one or the other. So I found this little cabinet on Facebook Marketplace. It was only 25 bucks, uh, pretty much brand new and uh, stained and everything. I didn't even have to stain it. And uh, it just happened to match the trim in the room. So that was nice. But this cabinet is the perfect size for my resin printer. I'll put the uh, dimensions of everything on screen in case you're uh, wondering. My idea was to uh, put a hole in the side of this cabinet so I could attach the vent to it. And I wanted the vent to kind of be modular so I could uh, move it back to its original position because I, I like to use it as a vent booth as well. I was able to position the cabinet so I could get screws into two studs on both sides. So that's what I did, making sure that it was mounted level. I did have to lower it a little bit. I originally wanted it to be uh, right up against the ceiling, but I couldn't uh, get the door open the whole way when I did that. So I had to move it down a few inches. I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to fit these shelves back to the right of this thing, but uh, they did fit. I left the original mounting bracket behind the cabinet because uh, I used drywall mounts and it was really hard to get the thing out. So I just decided to use another one because I had some of these on hand. So that's why the, the one to the far right is a little bit longer because it's, it's from another setup that I'm no longer using. But long story short, I was able to get those shelves there without cutting them down, which was pretty great. More space is always nice. I decided to move the fan back a few inches on the wall because I had the space to do it and I wanted the fan to be as flush with the side of the cabinet as possible so I could have the 90 degree angle from the vent as perpendicular to the uh, cabinet as possible. I didn't really want to have to work with weird angles since I wanted it to be modular. The mounting system for this particular fan is a freaking nightmare. Oh my God, you don't even know. I remember it being a pain the first time I mounted this and uh, with even less space to work with this time, it was pretty bad. I had originally mounted a two x 10 board onto the wall here so that I could easily move the fan around if I needed to in the future. And I'm glad I did that because uh, that made it a little bit easier. But the mounting bracket for this fan is a real pain to work with. Without a really long drill attachment, it's pretty much impossible to get the screws into this bracket dead on. I pretty much had to put all the screws in on an angle. Once I came to the realization that I was going to have to put them in on an angle, it was a little bit easier, but it took me a little while to finally give up on putting them in straight. You can also see that I have a two by four piece here that I originally cut a little bit of an angle on so that it would sit nice and flush with the bottom of this vent fan. This not only helps support the fan, but it also holds the, uh, the vent piece in, which is gonna be really helpful with my modular setup. So once I had the fan in place, I did a dry fit of the vents. I bought this mounting piece and that sockets into my six inch elbow that I had in there originally. And this mounting piece has uh, some foam around it. It's got sticky tape on the foam, so uh, you just take that off and it forms a nice tight seal on uh, whatever you're sticking it to. At this point, I wasn't sure if I wanted to permanently attach that or not. I was mostly just test fitting everything at this point. I also bought another backdraft dampener. This one's a little different than the other ones. I wanted to mount this into the wall of the cabinet, so if I had a modular setup, there wouldn't be a uh, huge hole if I had to move the vent while the resin printer was on. I used a hacksaw to slice off the circular bit that was going to be facing inward because that section of the pipe was unnecessary and I needed as much space as I could get on the inside of the cabinet. Then I got a rough idea of where I wanted the thing to sit inside the cabinet and I traced some lines where I wanted to cut the holes out. Then I drilled some pilot holes in the corners and I carefully cut out the square hole with my jigsaw. This was a little tricky since I didn't have a lot of space to work with. It probably would have been a lot easier to do if I had taken the cabinet off the wall, but I just didn't feel like doing that. Once I had the hole cut out, I dry fitted the vent and it fit pretty well. So far, so good. There were a few gaps around the sides, but they didn't really seem to affect airflow in a significant way. As you can see here,
Next, I had to drill a hole for the resin printer's plug to fit through. I didn't have a drill bit that was the perfect size for this hole, so I had to use a round file to make it a little bit larger. I bought a little spillover tray to set underneath my printer. Unfortunately, the printer didn't quite fit inside of it, so I had to put some 2x4 blocks underneath it to lift it up a little bit. With everything dry fitted, I wanted to do a test print, and I thought I might as well try out my new Soraya Tech Fast. I've heard good things about this stuff, so I wanted to try it out myself. I ran the fan on a low setting. That seemed to be more than enough to create some negative pressure inside the cabinet, which was the goal. And the first test print actually went really well. The vent booth seemed to do what I wanted it to do. It vented the smelly fumes out of my house. And I gotta say, so far I'm really liking this Soriatek fast. Next I drew a black line on the elbow piece. So if I repositioned the pipe, I could easily line it up again. And I drew a red line around where the elbow piece met the mounting piece. There was a flat section around the lip of this piece where the tin was joined together. And I wanted that to sit parallel with the cabinet door. So I knew that was going to be the front facing section of the pipe. I cut along the red line, removing most of the tin, but I left an extended section on the bottom about four or five inches long. Then using construction adhesive, I glued the dampener into the side of the cabinet. Once that was dry, I removed the tape on the uh, mounting piece and I stuck it on there and I put two screws in that to help hold it in place. I positioned this so that it would sit on the lip of the dampener. Finally, I tested the elbow piece to see if I could easily remove it and reposition it. I will say that when it's in position to vent the resin booth, there is a slight gap in the piping where I cut that section off. I had to cut that section out so the elbow piece would be easy to remove. If I had more space, I could easily get around this. But since I'm working in such a tight space, this is uh, the best I could come up with. I don't really think it affects the system that much, but I might end up tying a piece of cloth around it or something like that. The extension on the bottom lip kind of acts as a guide to uh, hold the elbow piece in place and position it properly. And I think it works pretty well. A couple quick notes. There is a small gap around the uh, edge of the cabinet door. It's uh, roughly like an eighth of an inch. So this isn't a completely airtight system but it's a lot better than just leaving a resin printer in an open room. The gaps are small enough that I can leave the fan on a low setting and it still creates uh, negative pressure. So the uh, resin fumes aren't escaping out of the cabinet. They're just, they're always going into the vent. And I've noticed that most of the fumes are pretty much held in place by the actual lid on the resin printer. So whenever I'm removing that lid, I turn the fan on high first, and then I slowly back the lid off to make sure that it sucks most of the air that's inside there out because that's where a lot of the resin fumes kind of concentrate. That lid is kind of like the first line of defense. And obviously when I'm dealing with this thing or handling resin, I always wear my mask and my gloves. But I will say having a vent system like this really helps with fume management. And I'm probably just going to be using this setup in the winter. When the weather permits, I will most likely be moving this back into my garage. So yeah, that's my modular dryer vent vent booth that I came up with. If you have any questions or critiques, leave them in the comments down below and I will get back to you. Be sure to like the video and subscribe for more content on my 3D printing journey. Hopefully you found this video useful and maybe got some ideas for your own vent booth setup. Either way, thank you for watching. I hope you have a good day and I will see you later.